It's just too confusing, the launchers. I mean, there's too many of them, too many things to consider. My mind can't handle it. I just can't figure it out. Need some help, somebody. <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome back for another video. So you're, you're shopping for a launcher and you wanna know what's the best launcher or the best choice for you? Well, it's very difficult because there's a lot of parameters. You could spend a lot of time researching and spending a lot of time accumulating all that information or you can um, ask AI. Maybe AI has the answer. Well, I tried that. In this video, I, I asked AI and it gave me, gave me it's, it's feedback. And then I went through a bunch of iterations with the AI and I, I made a lot of improvements and changed things where it was just blatantly wrong or it had misinformation or it was just things that it, it misunderstood. Uh, but I used that as a tool and I eventually got to a product that I actually think uh, it's a very, very good uh, analysis of the launchers that I, that I looked through at. First, I'm gonna show you my waiting strategy. I'm gonna tell you why I waited things the way I did. And of course, this is all subjective. You know, you, you may just only value one of those many parameters and you say that's the only one that matters. But in, the, in reality, price and size and, and all of these different parameters really do matter. So in this video, I'm taking my time going through and showing you this and then AI is crunching all the data and it's giving me rankings and it's telling me which are the best launchers. And so I think it's interesting and I'm gonna share it with you in this video. Okay, to set up this AI model, first what I did was I decided what parameters are the kind of things that I wanna weight higher or what are I wanna weight lower. So before I even started thinking about individual launchers, the first question that I asked was how many different parameters do I want? And I brainstormed a bunch of these. And, and then I use the AI to search and, and go into each launcher and then pull out information. And then I had to go in and check each launcher for the information that AI had brought. And I had to make sure and do a reality check that it matched my understanding of all the, not only the literature, but all the videos and all the testing and everything that everyone has done. And so that was sort of the iterations that I did. And I, I can just tell you up front, my experience with AI is that uh, it pulls stuff from the internet, but it is not always accurate. It, it, can, it can give you a nice approximation initially, but there'll be some areas where price or function will be way off. And so I had to go in and do iterations and adjustments. So the first thing I wanna say is I, I I put power and size as the same weight, but the very highest priority that I put was on reliability. And I don't think any of us should have a, an argument with that. Uh, we want reliable launchers, then we want powerful launchers, and we want small size. So those are uh, the top in terms of the weighting. The next is, um, uh, and going down the list, is CO2 charging method. That's, that's the next one in terms of my weighting. Then the next ones, I have a, quite a few that fall in that area. The power to length ratio is something that basically takes into account both power and size. So, so we want to give an advantage to a launcher that is compact and powerful. I want, I want that to be a significant factor. So that's uh, what rate ranked as, uh, as uh, number 10. Um, then as you go a little lower, there's other things like track record, ammo, maintenance issues, uh, whether it's a chemical only launcher or it can do chemical and kinetic. I think I put that down on the list as it's not as important, but that was sort of my, my strategy. So as you can see here, I'm showing you the different types of weighting that I did on, on a variety of parameters. It's a very extensive list. And so I went through every um, launcher that has a significant track record, including some new launchers, and we went through them one by one, and that's what I'm gonna show you next. So we use that scoring ranking criteria to go through and then determine the weighted scoring for each launcher in each category. So there was a total of one, two, three, four, five, six launchers. The launchers that were tested include, in no particular order, 
the Berna CL, the Grimberg Gavel, those are the two smaller ones. Uh, then there's the Tipix, the Pistel, the Salt Supply, and the FSC TCP. So I picked, these are common uh, pistol shaped launchers. And we went through power, size, reliability, ammo compatibility, track record, out of the box readiness, maintenance and ease of use, aftermarket support, price, um, whether it's pepper spray only or it can be used for kinetic, CO2 charging, and then one parameter which I, I think we, we discovered from the analysis that's a really the most important in score driving was the power to length ratio. And that's the one that I, 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 I rank that one as, as um, really important in, in the scale, you know, right after power and size because the power to length ratio takes into account everything and it's a dynamic process that measures really how innovative something can be in getting the most out of the least amount of space. And that's, that's really what we all want ultimately at the really core of it. And so those were all the parameters that were put in and went through each, each launcher. Now, some launchers obviously are smaller, some launchers are, have more power, some launchers cost more. These are obvious things. Um, track record is something that uh, some launchers have less track record, some have more. That was, you know, again, that was scaled appropriately. Um, but there's, you know, some that are have proprietary parts. For example, uh, Berna is a 61 caliber, the CL. I, I specifically focused on the CL and not the LE or the SD for this analysis. Um, for the CL, it's, it's proprietary ammo and it's... Uh, uh, even the CO2 uh, with the Berna, with the Grimberg Gavel, you have similar types of questions about CO2. Uh, also, the ammo needs to have, be magnetic. So you, unless you have other uh, 68 caliber magnetic ammo, you're sort of dependent on the Grimberg detent system, the magnetic detent system. So these are some intrinsic things about different launchers. Some launchers are just, they, they work well, and then some launchers, uh, you hear about this, and I monitor social media, so that's where I get a lot of my feedback. And, um, you know, in terms of how well people like their launchers, whether they're having to send them back or they're self-serviceable, uh, how is the customer service? I took all of this kind of information into account in terms of uh, building the scores, the scores from one to 10 for each launcher, so you got six launchers, you got each launcher ranked one to 10 for, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 different categories. And each of those categories is ranked and weighted. So uh, that's a lot of numbers and a lot of calculations. That's why I used AI and AI was able to really crunch this stuff very quickly. And I was able to go through and, and vet it. So we went through the weighted scores and that's really where the data starts to emerge. And then you end up with the very end with a final total. It's a weighted sum. And the launchers are ranked in order one to six. We, we got a good stratification and that's important. But the one take home message was that there was no clear, perfect winner at the top. There were two. Uh, and I'll tell you what they were in just a minute. Uh, but those two were literally neck and neck. And, and I think our... Uh, our conclusion from that is that, that priorities matter and, it, and it's telling you that there is some subject, subjectivity, even with all of those numbers and all that analysis, there is some su subjectivity in this and it may determine which of those is the one that you choose depending on your needs. Um, the, the other thing was that the size versus power synergy calculation was a real differentiator in, in terms of separating out the, the launchers at the lower end and the higher end and it, and it showed exactly uh, what we wanted it to show. Uh, launchers that were smaller, that literally punched above their weight, they, they got credit for that. And, uh, and that's, a, you know, that's a, a testament to the engineering and the efficiency of the launcher. That takes skill. Uh, I've always said that anybody can make a big, powerful launcher, but to make one that's smaller and powerful, that's, that's the real deal. And that's, that's called carry power, and that's something of, of real value. Uh, one thing that we also noticed was that the legacy launchers, they still hold their ground. You know, the FSC TCP, the Tipix, they were actually 
they're, they're good launchers if you, if you don't mind tinkering and you don't mind doing, doing things with those. They're still great platforms. They're solid. They have, they're not antiquated yet. And there's a lot of good things about that. The other thing is, uh, the and final take home message is that they are the budget options, the, the lower price range. There's, there's some clear trade-offs that you have to make when you go with a lower price launcher. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but uh, you just have to realize that, that you are obviously you're making some trade-offs and that is reflected in my data. All right, let's get right down to the punchline. So the bottom line is, in terms of this analysis, the top two launchers, they were really indistinguishable. If you look at the actual numbers, they differed by an insignificant amount. It was just no different, but yet the next tier of launchers were were quite a bit down. You're, you're in the in the high 1800s on our score. 1841 was the top launcher, and that is the Pistel X68. But the number two launcher was scored 1835, and that is the Grimberg Gavel. Those are the top two launchers. The next tier down from that, you got to go all the way down to 1457, 1428, and then you get into these longer launchers that have other things that come into play and that are score driving. But the advantage of the gavel and what really brought the gavel up a lot was that calculation. And I think that is really the magic sauce in, in this whole thing that everyone is looking for, is they're looking for the smallest possible carryable launcher that, that retains power. And, uh, but the Pistel still is right there because the Pistel has the power and despite the size and despite uh, you know, other things, it has many other advantages and it, and it ranks right there with the gavel. And so it really is, is like split between the people that want the smaller or the larger, but people do not seem to want to um, sacrifice power. And I've sort of come to, to realize that and I, that was part of the ranking in terms of if it's a chemical only launcher, it's going to fall down the list just because of public sentiment. And so I ranked it accordingly. I don't want to go in and put in a bias and say, well, I, I would rather do chemicals only. I'm, I'm not gonna do that. I'm, I'm trying to capture the sentiment of everyone and what everyone is looking for. And that's why I hope in this video, everyone will see that I have taken all of the information from everyone, what they like, what they don't like. And all of this time that I've spent on social media learning uh, that I thought was not very useful, at least I was able to take that information and put it into this algorithm. The good thing is I have this established and I can make changes. I can also update it as a new launcher comes out and I can see how it stacks up with the competition. One, one interesting thing that I'm, I think may really push Grimberg up is the solstice. When the solstice comes out and it, it meets a couple criteria and if it can main, maintain the size of the gavel carry, that's, that's definitely score driving in terms of going up and making it highly competitive. So. I hope this was useful. I, I really wanted to uh, really take a quantitative approach to this because just sitting and spitballing numbers, uh, uh, you know, of joules and all this cost, it gets to be too many numbers to keep track. But now we know it's the Pistel X68 and the Grimberg Gavel Carry. I made a video on this recently, and it's really a popular video in terms of I compared them both. They're very innovative launchers, and it's really. Uh, Satisfying to me to see that they, uh, when you do this type of analysis, they the cream rises to the top and those two are there. Uh, it's not to take anything away from all these other options. And again, every every launcher has a niche and there's a, there's an application for it. But these are the two that came up here. And I, I look forward to having a conversation with you. I want your feedback. I'm gonna leave it at that. This is a longer video than usual, but I really want to take my time and go through. And I'm happy to discuss pros and cons in the comments section and really have that kind of discussion there. And I'm happy to also follow up. If there's another launcher that you know of that you want me to put into the comparison and, and run the numbers again, it's easy to do now that I've put in the hours getting this thing set up and I think it's a pretty reliable algorithm at this point. Everybody be safe, take care, be smart. We'll see you next time.